M. Rossiano. How dare you? And that is correct. I feel attacked and seen all at once. <laughs> and Michael Lucas. I was working for Baz Luhrmann. Oh, I'll oh, just pick that name up. Oh, no, but it, yeah, I was. This is M. Salation. My vagina's dying. She's just going, it's like... <laughs> You're in M. Salation. Hello. Welcome to M. Salation. <laughs> This is my 10th attempt at the intro. I cannot focus because I finally relented and listened to the Adele song in its entirety because I'd only done 15 seconds because it made me very emotional. And then I watched the film clip at the same time and now I have... (sighs) Hello. They know gold. (gasps) Oh, my God. In this river. I just can't, you know, like, she sees me. Come on, Em, focus. My name is Erasiano. If this is the first time you're picking this pot up, well done. And I'm not going to do it again. This is it. This is the intro I'm sticking with. I don't care how bad it is. Well, I've been washing my hands in forever. (laughs) Go easy on me, babe. I can't. Like, what a hook. I hate you. I love you, Adele. She makes like she just manages to articulate that very painful spot in my soft bits. You know, I'm coming out of lockdown. I'm feeling like I've lost myself a bit. I want to shake off the cobwebs. I want a long leather trench coat, although totally inappropriate for this time of year in Australia. I want Talon's Barbara Streisand esque. She just sits there, just singing my soul. How dare she? Compose. Have I said all this stuff yet? I'm. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I've had 15 side quests. Did I mention that I am a neurodiverse person? Okay, let's just go. Reset, reset, reset. Hi, welcome to M Salation. My name is M Rastian. I'm a writer, a singer, a neurodivergent magic brain, as just demonstrated for the last 45 seconds. <laughs> Maximalist power queen. And together with my best friend since I was 11, Mr. Michael Lucas, who's a screenwriter. He's written a lot of things, things that you would love. Oh, God, wait, I'm about to crash into another recording. Hang on a minute. I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm back. That will make no sense, but I'm not starting again. Michael Lucas, he's my co-host. Well, he's my special guest star. He's like Heather Locklear was to Melrose Place. Like, my name's on the pod because it's just less pressure on him and, you know, that's it's the way he wants it. It's easier, but he's always here. He's always here. Um, Thank God. <laughs> Keep going, M. I'm having so many side quests. There ain't no gold in this river. He'll be so glad that I finally just took it up a key then. I don't even know what key she does it in. I can't. Uh, he was like, you got to watch it. you got to listen to it. And I said, no, it'll upset me. It'll upset me. And it has. I'm totally discombobulated. Focus, Amelia. God. Going to have to. 10, 9. What was I talking about? Okay. This week on M Salation, your favourite podcast, political pop culture princess penis obsessed. This week we talk about Emma Wiggle. Do you, I don't know if, if you have ADHD, you know what I'm talking about. I feel like the bees in my brain are hemorrhaging sideways out of my ears and I'm desperately trying to hold on to the, like, you know battle ropes when you're doing F45 and the battle ropes are strong and true and you whip them down on the ground and they maintain their integrity and there's like this woven hollow tunnel my brain is hemorrhaging out the sides and I'm trying to clutch onto the battle cord that represents this chain of thought that I'm trying to have. But the battle cord is fraying into bees and they're flying out my ears. So clutch the battle cord to talk about what we talk about. Oh, I'm, I'm having sensory overload today. Um, and, again, if you're not neurodiverse, it's hard to explain, but, like, my entire system is assaulting my brain. Like I can feel the sweat under my armpits. I can um, feel the fan on my, the hairs on my arms. I, my heart is very loud in my ears. Like I'm having a sensory overload day, which is good. Like I've been very productive this morning and I'm in full creative, crazy professor mode. <laughs> Sorry. Sensory overload's fine, but it's a thing that happens to me and I'm having it while I'm recording this intro, but it is my 10th go. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Zeke, leave all of this. It's, I don't care, people need to understand the experiences of us neurodivergence. Okay, so we talk about Emma Wiggle leaving the Wiggle she announced and it is a 20-minute deep dive into my deepest feelings about this. We also talk about Succession, our favourite show, flat out. 
the first episode of season three was released this week on Binge and it was electrifying, possibly the greatest ever opening app of any season of any show ever in all of time. And we also talk about the fact that Melbourne's opening up this week. I got it out. Yay! I'm going to end this because I can't focus. But um, thank you for being here. If this, if you're new, wow. <laughs> it's not normally this chaotic. I am and have been a professional broadcaster for so long. Okay, I'm going to try and put in broadcasting mode and I do know what I'm doing, but there was just so much chaos in my brain and I can't bring myself to do this again. Um, that's it. I'm going to throw to the music and get myself together long enough to be able to record the outro. <sighs> okay. Love you. Bye. Play the music, Zeke. Make it end. M. Luciano and Michael Lucas. This is M. Salation. Michael Lucas, uh, in the last couple of days, there has been some breaking Wiggles news. Hello and welcome to Network Wiggles News. In breaking news today... You did send me feverishly... Feverishly? Feverishly? What, what's the word? You give me fever. Feverishly. Fe- fever, you... you. Feverishly? Feverishly. You're like, was I the first? You sent me the press release that Emma, the yellow wiggle, is leaving the band. Was I the first? And you were technically, but I did receive the press release 24 hours earlier (sighs) under embargo because that is my standing within the Wiggles universe. When the Wiggles... I hadn't (laughs) realised where you sat in the Wiggles universe, the supreme position that you occupy. So basically what happened was they found out and the Wiggles PR publicist lady sat down and said, well, we need to let him know. So... That's right. I'm so, I think they should have maybe considered how they broke. I mean, a press release is quite impersonal. I would have thought that they were. Personal call. <laughs> uh, yeah, and a counsellor on hand, yeah. just sort of, and then a social media strategist. Yeah. There should have been a lot of stages to how they broke it to I you. Agree. I agree. Uh, quite frankly, I should have been involved in a Zoom meeting when she was discussing resigning for the first time. Before, like, I think so. Yeah. I think you would have been a good point of contact. You know, I mean, you know more than more than perhaps even she knows yeah. about the intricacy psychologically of the issue. Shall I read the carefully worded press release? And I just want to say to you, I went. It was a six-page press release that I got, and I've never read a more carefully, painstakingly executed, stunning example of twenty people on a round table on how to do a press release of an exit of a children's entertainment. Give it to me. (laughs) Okay, here we go. So first of all, um, they announced that they've got three big announcements. We've got three big things to tell you. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. One. The first thing is that Emma's leaving. Two. The second thing was that they're going on a world, on a national tour with the new Emma, who we'll get to. Three. And also that the original Wiggles are doing a regional tour. That were the three big announcements. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, God, it's a big day. Wiggles really is, It's it's it really is the whole universe at the yep, moment, isn't it? it? Is. I mean, there's just so much to it's it. It's part of mine. Uh, here it is. The beautiful Emma bids farewell as the Wiggles welcome Sahai. Sahai, which means yep. the sun. Um, so Sahai, they're welcoming Sahai. You have such a beautiful name. Let's sing it, everyone. Hey, Sahai. And she is 16 years old, but we'll get to that. Yeah, okay, good. We'll get to that. I have lots of thoughts about that one. Emma Watkins has made the momentous decision to hang up her yellow bow at the end of the year. Emma explains, after 11 years of performing with the Wiggles and nine of those as the yellow wiggle, the time has come for me to pass the yellow skivvy on. Like many people around the world, the pandemic has given me time to reflect on what's important in life. And for me, that means spending more time at home, something that I didn't realise I was missing out on being away eight months of the year on tour, but something that I've cherished over the last 18 months. I'm also looking forward to devoting more time and energy on completing my PhD. Yes. Yeah. That incorporates my ongoing passion for sign language, dance and film. Um, editing and to have more time to work with the deaf community. I'm eternally grateful to the Wiggles, blah, 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 and that's it. Do you think she's the only person on planet Earth that has come out of this pandemic and thought, I need more time at home? (laughs) (laughs) 
let's just say I haven't even had to spend as much time at home as most people and I have not come to that conclusion. I love that. But also she wants to, she's moving back to the Southern Highlands, which is where her parents live. So I had an inkling of all of this, I just want to say. First of all, I knew that the new Wiggles, the new young Wiggles that were introduced were the succession plan. That was obvious, yeah. okay? Also, Emma sold her house in July and I remember reading that going, oh, I'm moving out of the city, are we? So she <laughs> sold her place in Sydney City and is relocating to the Highlands where her parents live and she's obviously still <laughs> engaged to the banjo fairy-winged uh, wiggle cast member whose name is not important. He's a, bit, he's a side part. She's the main character. So I knew that something was up and I just <laughs> want to first of all say can we all stop putting guilt on this poor woman. I've seen so many mothers in like absolute, oh, this is such a letdown. My child is going to be devastated. How could she do this? So many kids love her because P.S. If you're not across the wiggles, first of all, what are you doing here? Second of all, she is the marquee player. She sells yeah. the most merch. When you go to a wiggles concert, the, the yellow skivvies outnumber five to one. She, she's the Elsa of the wiggles. She's the Beyonce. Of Destiny's Child. I love you. Okay. And Lockie is like the Michelle. So actually, no, lie. Lockie's Kelly. Mm. So Kelly's going to have her time. And I just want you all to remember that she's allowed to have a life. And the other great thing is there's so many Wiggles episodes. You can just keep playing your kid the old episodes until they stop loving the Wiggles. You just keep playing them. Yeah, oh, my God. You've got a decade's worth there. Yeah. Just go for your life. So much. I love that Emma started out as a Dorothy the Dinosaur and a backing dancer and she's been every couch. She's been wags. And then she mm. was given the call up. She was knighted to become a full-time wiggle, first female ever. And I remember when she was knighted, she copped a lot of backlash because she was um, adhering to gender stereotypes and, and was wearing a skirt and she had to come out and say, guys, I just really like skirts. I'm a ballet dancer. Mm. Leave me alone. Mm. Um, so it's been an exhausting, I imagine it's been exhausting. She obviously met her ex-husband, Lockie, and they fell in love. They got married. They got divorced. He then fell in love with another backing dancer on the show. They've just had twins. And <laughs> if I was, okay. And I'm not saying Emma would, Emma's a big person. Lockie's big, Dana, Lockie's new partner, mother of his twins, is a lovely woman. I know her. She's lovely. When I say I know her, I follow her on Instagram and we've DM'd twice. Um, if I were her, I, I'm just going to be completely honest, I would be so relieved that my husband's hot ex-wife, who he still gets along with, is no longer going to be on the road with him. Like, I'm just saying it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I... I, I, You're only human, of I'm course. Human. And I'm not saying yeah. she feels that way, but if Scott was in a children's band with his ex-wife and they toured oh, eight months totally. of the year together. And it's probably not even conscious on her part. It's just something that was clenched inside of her loosened <laughs> when she saw that news. So true. She's like, all of a sudden she's like, oh, wow, what a shame. <laughs> what a shame she's leaving the band. I'm devastated. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a big thing. And... Then we welcome Sahai. Sahai is an incredible, she's a, an award-winning dancer. She's represented Australia at the World Latin Dance Championships. Tashe has won... At 16 already. Yeah, Tashe has won oh 11 Australian titles, four world titles in Latin and commercial dance, and is the current Australian and World Youth Ladies Salsa and Urban Latin Champion and the current World Amateur Ladies Salsa and Urban Latin Champion. Oh, my God. You hear that? That's the future of dance sport, and no one but no one's going to change that. She's amazing. I was just more wondering, is she up for the rough and tumble rock and roll life that would be on tour with the Wiggles? I think Because I certainly hope, mm. you reckon. Mm. Well, okay. she tours the world doing Latin dancing. Can you imagine? Okay, on with that scene. Mm. Yeah, if you can survive the Latin dance com competition oh, scene. Imagine. Imagine the behind the scenes. Like, she'll be, she won't have to wear as much bedazzling and there won't be as much pressure on the hair on her head being gelled back to within an inch of her life and the toe points won't be crucial to the point to win the world championship. I feel like this might be a nice change of pace for Sahai. I think she'll be like, oh. Also, but is this, this I guess it must spell her retirement from Latin dancing glory. Well, there's only so far you can go. She's very, but she's young. Mm, but I think, I feel like she's got to the pinnacle. What's the challenge for her? Why would she... Why would she keep going and the gruelling training and all those? Her hips would be very sore. I imagine she would have the hips of a 50-year-old woman. Wow, imagine all okay. the, you know, 
That's I don't know. J Lo's still rocking those hips. True, true. She's done some Latin dancing in her time. I mean, it's just I hadn't quite gleaned that a devastating day for the Wiggles community was maybe also a devastating <laughs> day for the Latin competitive dance community. Oh, a giant has globally. left. Akin to Michael Jordan announcing his retirement from the NBA. <laughs> I think you'll find. Thank you, Spot Reference. She's on fire. It's actually both. It's like it's like if on the same day yeah. Michael Jordan announced his announcement from the NBA and Jerry Halliwell left the Spice Girls and basically that's what's happened. It's amazing that the world has kept turning. <laughs> yeah, like can the Wiggles survive? Is this Harry Styles leaving One Direction? Because it's massive. She is. She is Harry Styles. Do, do you predict that she could go in a Harry Styles direction? But she wants to do, she wants to finish her philosophy degree and stay at home. I feel like she wants to be more behind the scenes and be creative. You know, like I get that sense from mm. her, but... I understand. You are very cyclically in tune with her and, frankly, I'm a bit suspicious that you've hacked into all of her personal <laughs> accounts given how much you know about her. But, yeah, I just I want trust everyone to thank her for her amazing service. She's not put a foot wrong. She went through an extremely public divorce with a smile. It has to be said. With, with an Irish jig, with a Highland fling, she didn't miss a beat, you know, mm. and that is to, in itself to be applauded. She has provided all of us parents countless hours of being able to snatch a wee or a coffee when you pop Emma on. And I thank you, Emma Wiggle. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, my darling, and you deserve this. Off into the sunset you go. Off you go. And if anyone comes for her, I will fucking square up. I will find you. I mean it. That (laughs) bitch has done her time. She doesn't owe us shit. (laughs) She owes us nothing. Move on, jog on. And let's embrace the high. Let's embrace the new yellow wiggle. And Emma actually said that in her final, so classy, so classy, she hands the baton. Oh, faultless to the end. Yeah, she actually said, um, I look for, uh, as the wiggles continue to evolve and someone new now steps into the yellow skivvy, I look forward to seeing children and families embrace them just as I was when I began. Ah, oh, beautiful. What a classy way out. She should go into politics. Oh, she could. If she could survive the political upheavals and personal upheavals of the Wiggles, tell you what, Canberra would be easy. So i got to ask you, what's Wobby, Wobby, what's Lockie's reaction to this? Like, you're, put yourself well, in Lockie's psychological space. Oh, it's fascinating. I mean, I was, I wanted to know if he did... Did he post a comment under the um, Instagram thing when she said she was leaving? Because you know he often he's very he's very intentional with his emoji Is he? use. You've not, you've pointed this out. What what do you mean? No, didn't he do something like? Didn't he do a little emoji and he ch- and he chooses the correct like skivvy emoji for True. him for him as a yeah? He's just posted he three big announcement. The Wiggles is um, Emma has chosen to leave at the end of the year. That's all he's written, and then under her post. Emma Wiggle. They come up first when I do searches, by the way. I just have to type Emma. Um, Has he liked it? He hasn't liked it or commented. Mm. See, I look, okay, I (gasps) I don't know these people. (gasps) What, what? He hasn't commented. Oh, no, okay. No, no, better. His partner has, though, Dana. Classy bitch. (gasps) Let me tell you what she's written. Emma, this is is Emma's ex wife Husband's yes, partner. Yes, new, yes, partner, yes, go. The class, can I, I'm just so overwhelmed by the <laughs> level of class I'm displaying here. Not since Brad and Jen have we seen this level of grace. Donna, em, oh shit, I just liked it. Oh, oh. Donna, oh, too late. It's all right. No, well, you do ah. like it. You respect it. You're saluting it. You're okay. doing a five-minute salute to it on a podcast. I think it's okay, okay if you like it. Emma. Thank you for brightening the lives of so many, for so generously sharing your talents, time and energy with children and families everywhere, for inspiring children everywhere, for comforting families everywhere on those particularly hard days. Seeing children light up when they see you on screen and on a stage is nothing short of remarkable. The genuine connection you shared with children is a rare gift. You will always be a special person to so many because of the impact you had on them. So lucky we were able to witness your talents and magic oh. in real life. Much love to you. Three yellow hearts and three kisses. <gasps> wow. I mean, I would have written by bitch. So this woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. So a moment impressive. of silence. I look. Oh. I, I, all I can say is, I just wonder. 
I mean, it, I, how much do we want to psychoanalyze the Wiggles? Quite a lot. But do you reckon there's a little part of Lockie that that the full impact of the of the end of that relationship would only hit I now? Think so he hasn't commented. He hasn't commented. I think he's got a lot to go through. I think it'd be very, very difficult. Wow. Because she was still, because they split up, but she was still in his life. Wait, I'm checking she was if he's still liked in his it. life. He hasn't liked it. He hasn't liked it. Anthony Wiggles liked it. Simon Wiggles liked it. He hasn't liked it. He hasn't liked it. <sighs> well, I think we just need to respect the processes that he would be going through. <laughs> God, what an interesting, yeah. What a time. Because you'd be also be at pains to show that you're not sad in your new relationship as well. You'd, so there'd be that pressure on him too, plus they're launching this tour. I mean, God. So much. I really hope that someone's been recording their every move. You know, I want the Wiggles rockumentary one day, you know, like, and there's just I footage know. that someone's just been following around with a phone. I need that. Mm. I need that so badly. But, oh, that's a re- that was a live revelation for me. And Donna, I know, it was riveting. I know some of your friends listen, or maybe you are, you, I need the number of your therapist because you Do are. Do I ever tell you? Oh, go, sorry. go, tell me, go, yeah. I can't, I can't believe this is finally coming out now, but who knows the next time we'll speak about the Wiggles. Once I worked at a Christmas inner Melbourne appearance by Dorothy the Dinosaur what? and I was on the front line of, yeah. So so basically. Back in your in day, like Mel- back in the day. Back in the day when I was like a temp waiter. Yeah. And so I just get sent to random events and I was sent to this event and it was Dorothy the Dinosaur coming out to do an appearance so kids could line up and get pictures. Right. And firstly I was put like individually on with Dorothy, oh. and they just said, you've just got to make sure kids love to jump on the tail. Do not let the kids jump on the tail because Dorothy can overbalance. Oh, no. It's really uncomfortable. Oh, no. And I failed. Like, you had the one kids job. Just like straight jump. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. And so then so then they said, you're going to have to go on managing the line. You, you, <laughs> basically, I wasn't cut out to handle you the friends with marrying Dorothy. I was, I was, I, I was demoted <laughs> to managing the line. But then, but then the line got so long, at a certain point they said, we c- there's no time for anyone else. So anyone that rocks up now, you need to look them in the eye and say, you will not see Dorothy today. No. <laughs> and then people would rock up and i go, I'm terribly sorry, but the line is already too long. There's no point waiting because you won't see Dorothy. And I can't even, it was, it was like successively telling, informing multiple people of death. And people were so angry in their core going, I have driven my three screaming kids from Bendigo. Yeah. And if you are telling me that <laughs> it was the most hardcore shift I've ever worked in my entire life, I honestly feel like I was lucky to emerge from that alive. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? I'm having anxiety sweats. Because of I, it was horrible. I would have taken it was you horrible. on. I would have flat out taken you on. Oh, that they looked like it, it, it really felt violent. And, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the only time I've ever sort of felt that violence in the air was actually recently when the when the when the when the tradey um, riders ended up in front of our horses. <laughs> same vibe. Same, same vibe. vibe. People Desperate. on the edge. Yeah. Desperate. Yeah. Let's gone through a lot. Can't take any more. And you front up and some. Pimply ass skinny waiters saying and no I to was, you. I think I was twenty at the time, and and the worst thing was I was dressed as an elf. I didn't know you had elves working here. Oh, like it was, <laughs> it was an absolute insult. Oh my god, you buried the lead on that one. Oh. I can't believe I hadn't thought to say. I think it's because at the time Dorothy the dinosaur didn't mean anything to yeah. me, really. Oh well, hey. <laughs> doesn't matter. And it's only now that I truly understand where the Wiggles sit in, in not just the national consciousness, but your consciousness. <laughs> I love them. I'll never hear a bad word against them. I will continue to speculate and fantasise and conspiracize against them. Not aware, but it is now. I love them though. So I salute you, Emma. Emma Watkins. Knee, Emma Wiggle. And <laughs> wish you all the success in the world as you sail off into the sunset of PhDs and not having to wear those red wigs, which would be so itchy, with your fairy winged banjo fiance. Good luck, babes. Good luck, doll. <laughs> sail away, sail away, sail away. All right, we're going to go away. We're going to come back. Oh, there's more. God, we're really, we're really excited today. Succession. Season three, episode one. Oh. We're electrified. I mean, get ready. Yeah. If you thought that was outrageous. <sighs> Engage fucking beast mode. (laughs) We'll be right back. M. Luciano and Michael Lucas. This is M. Salation. Okay, Michael Lucas. We've been waiting. 
We have been waiting. So Succession Season 3, Ep 1, finally dropped on Binge and Foxtel this week. How long have we been waiting? Two years. Two? Yeah. It may even be more than that. Oh, God. Yeah. It, 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 because obviously it was delayed for the pandemic. Yeah. They were they were meant to start filming Season 3 and then Rona hit. Yeah. New York was hit particularly badly. Mm. Yeah. And so the cast dispersed. Mm. Sarah Snook came here to Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as she has now revealed to Vogue, fell in love with her best friend, Dave Lawson. We knew, and- we knew, we <laughs> knew. We'll get to that. So six- And got married. We yeah. knew. Anyway, for those of you who are unaware, we'll, we'll keep this quite broad. There'll be no spoilers, but you will love it. So if you haven't watched it, Succession, you can get it on Binge or Foxtel, and it's worth just getting Binge just for Succession. Everything I've done in my life, I've done for my children. I know I've made mistakes, but I've always tried to do the best by them. Because I love them. Have you thought about the possibility that your children are actually scared of you? Oh, fuck off. It centres around the Roy family who own a global media and entertainment conglomerate called Waystar Royco. (coughs) Maybe it's News Corp. Um, And they're all basically fighting for control of it. Logan Roy is the patriarch, played by Brian Cox. He's fucking amazing. And the, the four children, Connor, Shiv, Roman... And Logan are all kind of jostling for the top spot. And it just gets better and better. And I initially yeah. started watching because you told me it was centred around the Murdochs. Mm. Is it? Definitely? Yeah, well, Je- Jesse Armstrong, who created it, he originally wrote um, this sort of speculative script mm called Murdoch that was about, uh, that imagined a Murdoch family dinner. Mm. And it was a bit too hot and loaded to ever get made, but it was a really great writing sample. And clearly people thought, could you do some sort of a show along these lines? <laughs> but I mean, they're, they're, I don't know that they're the characters, it's not like, you know, Shiv is Elizabeth Murdoch no. or anything like that. But just, just the, I mean, it is wild that these incredibly influential and, and, and wealthy media conglomerates are run by families yeah. that have a family succession plan um, and are usually or, or extremely a lack of dysfunctional one. as well e- extremely as we've seen <laughs> e- even in even in the past couple of years with James Murdoch yeah. defying his family and yeah mm. so this it's it's a power struggle it's it's being called you know dynasty for white business people it's it is so watchable and you won't get don't worry like I said Chella hasn't watched it yet because she said to me I, I think it'll be above my head and I said no oh no you'll no, love no, no, it no. because everyone's a villain Oh. Every character uh, yeah. is a villain. So you feel safe. I don't know. I feel some weird safe sense of safeness with the storytelling because I don't have to invest in anyone emotionally, although you kind of end up doing because even though they're all despicable humans, they all just want approval from their dad. I thought my family was fucked up. This is next level. Yeah, and we can, Absolutely. we can all relate to that. So mm. sometimes, even though they're foul, when one of them is just looking so wounded and in desperate need of comforting, the mother in me is like, oh, I know you accidentally killed someone, but I'm going to give you a hug right now. That's the beauty A lot of people do say they can't watch it because they are too unlikable, but, I mean, it's weird. I don't necessarily watch a TV (laughs) drama to, like, my, you know, I grew up loving the the animated version of Maleficent and Ursula and, like, I, I, I I don't need... Yeah, characters to be admirable no. to make me want to watch them, no, like, and and these characters are all riveting and get more so <laughs> as it goes on. <laughs> They're electrifying. And our friend, well, your friend, my friend by proxy, um, Sarah Snook plays Siobhan Shiv, the only daughter, and she was in your movie. You discovered Sarah Snook. You did. I think that, that, well, look, I did give her her first big lead role yes. and, and, and it was electrifying. And I can honestly say, myself and Pete Templeman, we knew. We did knew, you? we knew, we knew. Yeah. We saw, I, rem- I will never forget seeing her first, um, her first test and she had to do this scene and just uh, she can do so much with so little, the tiniest little eye flicker. And I was looking at that footage thinking she is just a genius actor that is going to be able to do anything she wants. This is world class. Like I felt like this must have been what it was like when 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 they saw Tony Collette come in to do oh. Muriel or something like that. Like I, it was that kind of a feeling. I still remember watching it. And then leaving um, the house I was staying in and walking along the street going, oh, my God, whatever happens with this project, we have found this amazing performer. And there we go. I remember when you found her because when you were cast. This is Michael's movie, Not Suitable for Children. Can people still watch it? 
Yeah, it's in fact it's on ABC iView now, so you can watch it for free. Not, not suitable for children. Um, Michael wrote it based around a testicular cancer scare he had. And yeah, and she was like a sassy flatmate, the first in my very, very long line of sassy female <laughs> uh, gal pals that is, who knows where I get who it knows? from, but it persists to this day. Yeah. And M came to the premiere. M was in it. That, yeah, you were in I it. I was in yeah, the film. Not in the scene with Sarah Snook, though. No. You, your, your ass was ogled by Ryan, Ryan Quentin. Go- yeah, Ryan Quentin, definitely. Mm. Googled, ogled, not Googled, my ass. But I remember when you, yeah, you said, oh, I've, I've, we've cast the lead. She's amazing. And that's so. But to see her now on the red carpets of Emmys and and going to the Vanity Fair events and confessing to Vogue that she's married, which Michael and I knew. <laughs> um, it's like us. Honestly, I just feel like now I am successful in the film industry because of her. <laughs> <laughs> she also, I can't believe I'm saying this, but just before, like at the end of 2019, we hung out in New York and they were they were doing an event with the entire Succession cast and she she took me backstage with them. Oh my God, they the entire Succession you cast. You got to meet Cousin Greg. Except for Tom. Tom wasn't there. I did meet Cousin Greg, oh. yes. I met them all. So we're suitably obsessed and finally we were rewarded with Season 3, Episode 1. I cannot remember a more explosive, electrifying start to any season of any television show I've ever no, watched. Exactly. Do you? De- for, no. It ended on a hell of a cliffhanger oh. and they an a absolute game changer. And can we reveal that? We can reveal that, can't we? That that, that, that basically the uh, the son, Kendall, decided to completely throw his father under he the bus up, and yeah, declare war. Yeah, yeah. And the son, I would say the favourite son of... Well, it's very complicated. I think he's the favourite. changes all the time. I do. I do. Well, he was weirdly, and what was electrifying about the end of season two was he threw his dad under a bus and declared war. And then the last shot of the dad showed that he actually, the dad was actually quite proud of him. Yeah. Because you remember, he said the line to him, to Logan, to um, Kendall You're not a killer. You have to be a killer. But nowadays, maybe you don't. And then I said, I said, I said, he's going to go do something. He's just been challenged. And then he bloody goes mm. and throws his father under the bus and that's how it ended. And then I was like, how can they, how can they top this? How can they, where are we going to go? Surely this is the crescendo. But no. Nah. <laughs> oh, and they wisely picked it up like pretty much immediately afterwards mm. and you just tracked all of the fallout and, my God, and it's so funny as well. It is not only the best drama, it's the best fucking comedy on oh, television as well. Greg. The lines. Oh, when, yeah. So there's the buffoonery and the comic relief comes from Cousin Greg. He's not really part of the family, but he is like sort of vaguely related. And my favourite bit was when he was taking the, the cultural temperature. So after Kendall, <laughs> after Kendall's dropped the bomb and said, I'm going to lead the company, I'm staging a coup, my father's a criminal basically, Greg was then charged. They're in the car because everyone's abandoned uh, Kendall and he's like, Greg, can you just take the cultural, just take the temperature? Just like, and so Greg's like going through Twitter. You're the number one trending topic ahead of tater tots and the Pope followed you. Uh, wow. Okay, no, this is not the, re- is this the real? Uh, right. No, Great. I don't Thanks, think this Greg. is a Pope. <laughs> and how he just kept saying, no comment, no comment. And the lawyer's like, Kendall, just don't make a comment. Just uh, not Kendall, uh, Greg. You just by not making a comment, you're not making a comment. He's like, and he just kept saying it. No comment, no comment. It was electrifying. I just can't recommend and I it. I also enough. loved that little detail threaded through about whether or not with the dad and the group around the dad, whether or not they were going to get any food. <laughs> and it was just this stupid little absurd <laughs> joke where one's saying, I would really quite like to eat something. And then, then, then the dad's like going, the dad's like going, just swallow. We're operating on saliva and adrenaline here. And, and then <laughs> later on, someone has to creep in and goes, ah, he just really felt like he needed to slip away and have a sandwich. <laughs> So great. Just swallow. It was just great. Oh, but th- I mean, the episode ended on "We're at war, we're fucking beast mode," and then he just leaves the room, and I'm like, "Oh my god, that is! I want that on a t-shirt." We, we, mm. we're and in- it does feel like all the seasons were in up until now were were absolutely riveting, but it's clearly as well all been setting up the furniture for this kind of a showdown, which is going to play out over the whole season, oh. and the, it just they really they really delivered. And these oh. two are great because. Because Kendall is his second-born son because the eldest son, Connor, is so horrific. He's my least favourite character. He's running for governor because he wants to be president. But Kendall is the one that he underestimates. He's kind of really soft and emotional and he's probably the most likeable member of the family that all of a sudden you can see the God complex has entered his eyes and he thinks Mm. he's this heroic saviour and he's on the righteous path 
And so him taking on his father who will do anything at all costs, so both of them are definitely feeling as though they're in the right. I mean, I want 25 episodes just of these two mm. going toe-to-toe. I can't, I'm just... <laughs> Anyway, Succession, you can watch it on Binge. On Netflix, it's not Sponoed. They're not paying us. We just love good telly. It's pure love and obsession. Oh, and we'll send this to Snoke. I'll make sure Snoke hears this just so she can hear <laughs> our love. All right, now before you go, we can't. We have to acknowledge that we're having dinner at a restaurant together on Friday night. Oh. <laughs> it's a big step. Uh, and, and pretty much as we record this, mm. Not just Victoria, but actually Australia, on average, is going past 70% double dosed. I know. It's crazy. And Victoria is now going to be like over 90 and it's, and it's you know, zooming towards that. And so, my God, the era, maybe, touch wood, maybe, God forbid, a terrible variant, but we could be coming to the end of the whole thing that inspired this podcast 80 bazillion years ago. No, but so Friday <clears throat> we're opening up, Thursday as of midnight, and mm. oh, when I see those that footage of people lining up at Kmart at midnight, I, I full blown catatonic anxiety state. Did you see? I can't. know. Kmart. I mean, Spotlight maybe, but Kmart <laughs> maybe Priceline. <laughs> yeah, no, <clears throat> Kmart. The after and I saw some TikToks of the aftermath of the midnight shoppers, and they trashed the Kmart's. But the thing with Kmart is, guys, you can order and get same day pickup. I don't understand why people didn't just. I've been doing that. When I need a backdrop or a, I don't know, an organiser. What one? Maybe it's the ambiance of the game <laughs> experience that they want. I just can't imagine missing shopping centres so much that I would ever line up for anything. I think the only time I've lined up I think may have been when the members of Bardo Don't you treat me bad. Don't you make me were at my local Westfield. Maybe. I think that there was, mm. I think maybe a, or CBD. I don't know. I just remember maybe when I was a teenager, a Donny, one of the bands I loved was coming and I think I might have lined up then. But otherwise, I can't think of a reason. So it's all opening up. Meanwhile, the case numbers in Melbourne. We, we lined up. We lined up in the. Oh, for Madonna. Uh, until, for Madonna, yes. yes, of course. Until about four o'clock in the morning. 100%. We were the stayers and we were rewarded. I'm, I'm a kind of a closet comedian. I, yeah, I'm. The numbers are still massive here. Like in Sydney, they're going down. They're only like at 200s. The 200s, yeah. Ours are not. I think they'll start coming down here. No, well, I look, and also we have to put it in perspective in the, in the sense of they are massive by Australian standards. For any other country in the world, they are still, it's still a minuscule proportion of our population that are infected. And, and, and for what it's worth, thankfully at the moment, they're mostly younger people, thankfully in the sense that they're, unlikely to get you really know, sick. as sick. Mm. So. And the hospital stays are down and everything like that. So Dr Sharon Lewin went on 7.30 last night and told me that she thinks it's okay for us to be opening, so oh. I always take my cues from Sharon oh, Lewin. Yeah. She's a new one of my favourites. I love Sharon Lewin. I love her. She sounds like a character on Catherine Kim too, Sharon Lewin. Um, she does. Yes, yeah, totally. I am excited but also my main source of anxiety, because I've been talking to my therapist about it, so you're all going to get the benefit of my therapist right now. My main concern is living with covid like that's that's mm. because Elio is unvaccinated and obviously I spend a lot of time with my dad and so he's full vaccinated but 70. And I think for me the concern is that it's just still, if I had if we had Sydney's numbers and we were opening up, oh, my God, I'd be at a nightclub. But because our numbers are so high. <laughs> I just like to report that's bullshit. She wouldn't be. off. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's. He's spot on. Um, but I, I... She would think about yeah, it. Yeah, I'd get dressed. And then... I might, and then... Imagine yeah, the and then, <laughs> Because I booked out... And then ultimately decide that you just want to come around and watch YouTube. I booked out dinner for 8.15 on Friday night and you were shocked. So, like... <laughs> so, like, there have been various times where I have said to him, yeah, yeah, I can make a booking for this time and then I'll be like, what are you thinking? I am a 6 p.m. diner. That is the latest... <laughs> That's the latest I'll eat 6 p.m. I've been known to pop dinner on the table at 4.15. Oh. It's much better for you to eat earlier. Correct. Digestively. Correct. Oh, You'll no, sleep just better. Because Not that you sleep, <laughs> but if you did. No. no. But it's, yeah, so we are going up for dinner. But, yeah, so these are the things that my therapist have told me. First of all, it took us ages to adjust to being in lockdown, but we did, didn't we? So we, we can't expect yes. to come out of lockdown and be instantly adjusted because it's a whole new way. And, by the way, it is a new way. Things will never be the way our lives were in the mid-2019s. That's, they are days gone. 
They, so you can't. Comp- no, there's a, yeah, there's a part of your brain that was sitting there thinking about your proximity, yeah. thinking about the ventilation. Yeah. And that, you know, yep. that's not going to switch off anytime. I so. was watching Parks and Rec last night, and they were all squashed into a car, and we we're all like, "Oh, COVID, COVID." We're all very uncomfortable with how close they all are sitting in a car. Like it was, we're all a bit mm. triggered. But yeah, so mm. give yourself time. That's the when she said that, I was like, "Oh my god, you're so right." Because like you know, you expect you're going to come out of lockdown and not feel any social anxiety or weirdness. You're just going to go back to the old way. But the old way doesn't exist. So just let that go. And if you're having feelings of like self-consciousness and social anxiety out because we've all forgotten how to be around other people, uh, my therapist says to really focus in on the other person you're talking to and start asking lots of questions about what they're saying because it takes you out of your head of, oh, my God, I don't know which way to look. I don't know what to do with my arms. Is my face red? Do I smell? Is my breath weird? Oh, my God. It takes you out of that and onto them. And so I love that idea of just... Become really curious about the person you're talking to if you start to feel self-conscious. I love that. Uh, Do you love it? You don't get social anxiety. And also, uh, no, but I did. Uh, last time we went out, I did. Mm. I did. Not social anxiety, but it was like almost like a physical reaction to try and concentrate and just dealing with the noise. Mm. But also I was saying, like, just don't feel pressure that now that things are open, you have to go out and you have to be doing things. Like, it's fine to ease you. We've got Christmas coming yeah. up in the distant future. Just Yeah, don't let your FOMO your run your life. Do you know, like, don't no. don't let your yeah your fear of missing out make you do things you're uncomfortable with. And there's no right way to exit lockdown. I'll probably still live eighty percent of my life as though I am in lockdown, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And if you're feeling anxious about the opening up and you're feeling overwhelmed, that is totally normal. If you're not, I mean, you'll be in the minority. You're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's a good thing. It means you care. It means you're acknowledging stuff is going to be different. So you'll be, it's going to be fine. Like we're having dinner on Friday night. I'm very excited. Like I'm coming dressed like it's the Logies. I'm just warning you. Oh, okay. All right, all right. That sounds like a challenge, one that I'll try to meet. <laughs> I won't. I'll fail. I'll completely fail. No, nah, I just wear like a bright shirt. It's fine. Okay. Um, but, we, yeah, we're very excited for you, Melbourne. Sydney, you look like you're having a good time. Tasmania, are they still in lockdown? Gee. Someone should check in on Hobart. I feel like we should know this. I know, but I've I switched off. But I think, I feel like, are we the last territory to come out of lockdown? Is that it? I, I think Tassie's was only like five, five days, days, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Well, here we go. And uh, we'll leave you with uh, Dominic, old mate, per- Perite, has announced huh. the uh, incoming arrival of his seventh child. So. <laughs> <laughs> The beautiful rendition of that news. Seven. That his wife, my God. I went and obsessively looked and, and studied her and she is not of this. Yeah, just physically it is. It isn't. I mean, I know it used to happen in medieval so times, impressive. but that's a, that's just. I, I disagree fundamentally to the fibre of my being with her husband's values, but I salute you, Mrs. Perite, 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 Seven. Fucking, yeah, like three children has destroyed my body irrevocably. That is, I know. Ever. Just as an organism on this planet, she has done a lot. She is, but she has got those perite genes out there. You know, he's and... one of twelve. Whoa! Mm-hmm. She's not From done. The same yeah. womb. Same womb. She's not done. No way. Mm-hmm. Is it better if you just pump them out one after the other, after the other, after the other? So it's like you spend very little time not pregnant. Is that better? I just. I don't know. I mean, I had mine very far apart. But this, the damage is done, the damage is done, whether it's done straight away or whether there's a gap in between them. At the end result, your body is a hollowed-out shell, you know, with separated abdominal muscles and boobs you can roll up and fold under your armpits and <laughs> a little bit of wee comes out every time you sneeze or laugh and, you know, there's varicose veins under your chin and stretch marks under your, like on the back of your arms and, it's like, it's your body's done a thing and she, that her body will be doing that thing seven times and I just... All politics aside, I fucking salute her. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to sense he's probably, you know, he's probably a bit busy. I don't know that he's cutting up the school lunch. Nah. All right, on that note, um, there are other things we're going to talk about. We are sad that Harry and Billy are arguing, but they're not really arguing. A lot of you sent that in to us. It's fine. Billy was just annoyed with Vogue, not Harry. And, and we uh, we have not touched Squid Game or Adele's song, but we'll, th- I mean that's that's a conscious move on M's part, oh. and that's an intriguing psychological reaction she has. I won't watch Squid Game. Michael says it's one of the biggest cultural phenomena of all time. You have to, and I can't. So we'll talk about that next no, week. We'll talk about enough. next week. All right. Okay. 
Uh, I'll see you at dinner. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You All right. Bye. Bye. This is Emsolation. Okay. Well, that was a robust, spirited episode, wasn't it? I knew you'd like it. I knew you'd, you're smiling, aren't you? And I have composed myself since I recorded the intro. I've given myself a break. I went for a walk. I enjoyed the sunshine. And here I am, calm, composed. Your pal. The backbone of, I don't know what I'm the backbone of. Marcella's is the backbone of this family. I don't know. I'm, I must be someone's backbone. Thank you for being here. I do love making this podcast. Uh, if you love us, please recommend us to your friends. That is the way we continue being able to make this thing that we make each week. Also, I've been shadow banned on Instagram. Yay, Instagram, which basically means because I was doing uh, Love Nundrums with my daughter and Love Nundrums, if you're unaware, is a little segment I do each week on Instagram where we solve people's pretty spicy and hectic love conundrums. Instagram deem that inappropriate sensitive content and have stopped feeding my content to you guys. So just because you follow me, you won't see my stuff. Basically, what I need you to do is consciously check my profiles for the next little while and re-engage with my stuff so Instagram knows that you're not clutching your pearls. If you can do that, that helps me a lot. I know it's a strange thing and you guys don't, I wouldn't give it much thought, but a lot of us live and die by our Instagram, Facebook, socials and algorithms and that they're things that prospective employers look at. So if you love someone and not just me, if you love a creator online, always engage with their stuff, go and check every day or have press a little bell. You can do a little bell that will alert you if I post something new. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to like let you know that I have been shadow banned, which sounds way cooler than it is. Like shadow, I've been shadow banned. It's not good. Sounds cool. In reality, shit. <laughs> if you're in Melbourne, go easy on yourselves. <gasps> oh no, I'm triggered. Go oh, God. Anyway, do what Adele says. Don't go out too hard. I will. I'll be reporting to you about the dinner Michael and I are having on Friday night. I'm very excited. Uh, just go at your pace. You remember that. And uh, to everyone else, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, she's lost. I've lost my focus again. I was holding the battle rope firmly in my hand and it's just slipped out, so I best end it. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Join the Facebook group if you want to be part of an amazing community. And um, we'll be back next week on Thursday. Just try and stop us. Bye, guys. M Salation with M Rossiano is a Spotify exclusive podcast hosted by M Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley. Produced by M Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn at Entente Music. With videos by Liam O'Brien. Socials by Marcella Rossiano Barrow. With assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts. Plus occasional technical wizardry, wine, and coffee from M Dad Vinci. Get more Emsolation by following the Emsolation podcast on Instagram, where you can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. You can join other Emsolators at the Emsolation group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. If you love what we do, share this podcast with a friend and make sure you're following us on the Spotify app. Thanks for taking time out to listen to this week's episode, and we look forward to chatting with you again soon. Emsolation.